Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Well, our Christmas special will be aired next weekend. That's December 19th for our good friends in rural Alaska. From 7 to 7.30, we'll have fabulous singing. And then our Christmas special is from 7.30 to 8.30. Please join us. Make it a, an occasion. Gather your friends and family around and tell them the Christmas special is going to be Friday night from 7 to 8.30. It's going to be a blast. Today, we take a look at something that is near and dear to the hearts of our Native people, and that's trapping. And though some animal activists may not like trapping, it's been a tradition for many, many years in Alaska. It's a part of life for our native people to wear furs. I'll be back with Trapping in Alaska right after this. This program was made possible by Coeric Incorporated. Thank you, Coeric, for your generous support. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is also sponsored by the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation, serving the fisheries of the Bering Strait region. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. This program is also brought to you by ASRC Energy Services, a subsidiary of Arctic Slope Regional Corporation. Heartbeat Alaska is also made possible through the support of Norton Sound Health Corporation. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. I want to thank KYUK TV for this fabulous program coming up, narrated by John Active. It's fur trapping in Alaska. Bethel, Alaska. It is a bustling regional center for more than 50 small villages on the vast Yukon Kuskokwim Delta in southwest Alaska. For thousands of years, the people of the Delta have lived close to the land. To the Yupik and Chupik Eskimos, furs are an important part of their culture, traditions, and ceremony. To those living in the north, furs bring warmth and beauty. Many fur animals make their home here, but the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta is best known for Imagmutak, the mink. Each year in early winter, village trappers across the delta head out on their mink lines. Daluyat are traditional basket traps set for blackfish and mink. Traditionally, they were made with willow and spruce. Today, they may be made with wire. Village trappers have learned to blend old ways with new. 
Dalu yet are put in small tundra sloughs beneath the ice where the mink like to travel, looking for blackfish to eat. It is cold, hard work. As it has for centuries, the land provides. Meat from these mink will be eaten. Two mink and two traps. The pelts will be cared for. Some will be used at home, others will be sold. Far to the north, the Yukon River winds its way through the subarctic forests of Alaska's interior. The Yukon River Valley was a travel route for North America's first people, explorers, fur traders, and gold seekers also followed the Yukon River. Long winters and extreme cold produce furs of unsurpassed quality. Furs have been an important part of life here for centuries. Each winter, village trappers head out on family trap lines handed down across generations. Today, most trappers use snow machines to travel in winter. Some also use dog teams. Working dog teams are a common sight in many villages. Today in the interior, more than 30 villages are located along the banks of the Yukon River and its tributaries. In the village of Huslia, jobs are few. Most families rely heavily on the land to meet basic needs, and trapping has been an important part of their lives for generations. When I grew up, everybody, there was no job. Everybody around here really depend on trapping. That's the way everybody meet living. And I think that went on all the way up to, and the 60 he got in. Then they start to be work, you know, kids got to go to school and all that. So you got to have a job then. But all before that, everything was all trapping. Everybody pretty much meet their living with the all trapping. I'm going on 72 now, and I've been trapping ever since I remember, really. I still remember the first uh, mink I caught. I didn't set the trap. I was trying to, but my... My father helped me to set that trap. About two days later, I guess we went to going around the same place, and there was a mink in there. Boy, I caught that one mink, and uh, he took care of it. He skinned it and cleaned it and everything. But in the evening, I was talking about how much stuff I was going to buy. <laughs> I was rich. <laughs> I guess that was my beginning part of trapping. We have pretty big trap lines, so I kind of trap one side one year, another side another year, and kind of move along like that. I do the same thing with beaver. I trap beaver all my life, <clears throat> and beaver, we just take one or two out of the house, and that's it. And uh, we don't trap them next year. We trap another ones. That way, it, uh, there's always beaver. Yeah, it's always there. I guess the trapping is really stuck in me, I guess. I'm funny, you know? When I go out and I see my trap line, and I see the country out there, I really feel good, really. <clears throat> That's what mostly I go out for, really, right now. Many of the furs are sold to provide income to families in the villages. Some furs are kept for home use to make warm hats, 
mitts, and other clothing items needed to live and work in temperatures that reach 60 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. We trapped this ourselves, and, uh, and then I made it into parka. That's when uh, muskrat was a tie, but we were trapping muskrat to eat and hunting it in the spring. And he was working, so at the time, what few muskrat we were catching, we didn't sell it because I can make use of it. And so, like I say, we don't only trap for uh, money. That's not the whole meanings of trapping is money, but it's uh, to keep up the traditional and to keep your, uh, like Stephen's parents' trap line, he went out yesterday and it made him so good, feel, it make him feel so good to think back about his parents, where his daddy, used to trap, where his mom set fish trap, all those things, good memories. I really suffer for camp, even though I didn't stay in camp as much as him. But uh, that's, that's the whole life. And if there's no trapping, then uh, what people is going to do? Stay tuned for more of Alaska Village Trappers right after these messages. We'll be back with more fur trapping right after these messages. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Nuxet. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. Be sure to watch Heartbeat Alaska's annual Christmas show, December 19th at 7.30 p.m. on ARCS and Christmas Day at 3 o'clock p.m. on KYES Channel 5. You might see somebody you know wishing you a Merry Christmas, or you might just see yourself. What better way to spend your evening than watching Heartbeat Alaska's annual Christmas show on ARCS, December 19th at 7.30 p.m. and on KYES Christmas Day at 3 o'clock. If you visit Barrow in the summertime, it can be hard to sleep with that 24-hour sunshine. So, the King Eider, Barrow's newest hotel, does everything to make your stay quiet, relaxing, and worry-free. Don't worry about a cab. The King Eider is a short walk from the airport. Need to get around town? No problem. The King Eider rents cars. Want a room with a kitchenette? The King Eider's got them. Smoke-free, alcohol-free, it's the hotel so clean, they ask you to take your shoes off when you come in the door. The King Eider Inn. Barrow, Alaska. I'm an Alaska native and I live a healthy lifestyle. I don't need tobacco. It's not hard. I spend time with my family. I spend time outside. I love life and tobacco is not a part of it. This message brought to you by the Alaska Department of Health and Human Services and Eastern Aleutian Tribes. Hi, this is Dr. Gary Ferguson from Cold Bay, Alaska, and I watch Heartbeat Alaska. I used to feel uh, so bad when I start hearing about uh, subsistent stop, you know, subsistent hunting trap and everything. Oh my, I used to worry. It just make me sick. And uh, without those things, uh, it just suffer people more. Like him and I were, were okay, you know, kind of will do. We raise our kids and just, just two of us now and we got everything we need, yet we got to have that trap. It. It's our life. And it's, it's the people that need it. 
like this fall he trade with gas for all his Martin. And without that Martin, you know, he couldn't do what he did. So it's uh, trapping is just everything. <laughs> By April, the long Alaskan winter begins to fade. The days grow long. The air is fresh and mild. Spring returns to the North Country. Villagers all across the North head out to their traditional spring camps to harvest beaver, whitefish, birds, and muskrat. Here on the Yukon Flats, north of Fort Yukon, a return to spring muskrat camp provides a chance to be out on the land in a small income from muskrat skins. But more importantly, it provides a welcome supply of muskrat meat, a nutritious traditional food. It's part of my diet, okay? I have to be out here because on a yearly basis, whether I'm doing for fur or not, I have to have that meat. I gotta eat that meat. If I don't eat that meat, then I have something missing in my diet. But, uh, my body kind of urge for it. So if I eat a uh, few, I'm good till next year. I think I've done it every year. Uh, the only time I uh, didn't come out here was when I was in the city or work that uh, doesn't allow me to come out here. But I still make it a point, whether if I'm out here or not, to line up some people that are trapping to uh, uh, trade with me uh, in return for, for uh, whatever purpose. I might give them sugar, flour, tea, or whatever it is. And then in return, they would give me uh, five muskrat, six muskrat, just the meat, just to taste it, and then I'm satisfied for another year, okay? Yeah. This remote area of lakes north of the Arctic Circle is muskrat country. Each year, muskrats build thousands of tiny houses on the shallow, frozen lakes. As lakes become ice-free in late May, muskrats will be hunted from lightweight canvas canoes. But for now, they are trapped out on the ice. Active trappers cover a wide area, visiting many muskrat houses. Chink it. It's like chinking. Between trips to check the muskrat traps, many activities fill the days at spring camp. days of checking sets, caring for the muskrat skins and meat, is work that has many quiet rewards. Every day I go around these lakes, go to the next lake, go to the following lake, and we go, it, make a round trip of about 20 miles a day at least. You see in the waterways around here? And we travel, we travel from about 2 in the afternoon until about 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening. And that's our work hours. 
And then once we get back around 11 or 12 at night, then we have to sit down and whatever we brought back, we have to skin them out and take care of the meat, take care of the skin, stretch them out. Before you stretch them out, you have other skins on that uh, stretchers that are needing to be handled too. So you take care of those, you process those, and then you get, so actually it, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and yet it um, maintains your uh, mentality, okay? It maintains your, uh, physically, you're mentally awake and aware of everything that's going on around you when you're in the setting we are right now. Meat from muskrat can be boiled, roasted, or dried for future use. Meat from this day's catch provides the day's main meal. The skin of each muskrat brings only two or three dollars, but a trapper in good muskrat country may reach 1,000 skins. It's the cash on the other end, okay? How much cash can I get for it? How much cash am I making? How much am I making for my work? If we had 1,000 muskrat, we have $2,500. And if that's a month's work or three months' work, that's still a good wages if you really work at it. Money means that we can get back out here again and do it again and again. Looking to the future, Village trappers are hopeful that traditional ways, traditional knowledge, and respect for the land and animals will serve the generations to come. What skills that were handed down, I think those skills, if we were to uh, keep uh, teaching young people about these skills and uh, about the environment and how to keep it clean, how to keep everything else uh, in order and without disturbing it, I think that it'll be, whether it's years ago or 50 years from now, it'll still be the same, yes. My heart and soul and body and mind absolutely exist out here. Just tell your little brother you forgot to pick him up because you were getting stoned. He'll understand. Welcome to the Aurora Inn, Nome's newest and finest hotel. The Aurora Inn offers you clean, modern, quiet, and secure rooms. There are a variety of room types to choose from. Whether you're traveling alone, on business, or taking a trip with your family, you will always find a room to suit your needs. Also located at the Aurora Inn is Gnome's only quality vehicle rental service, Stampede Ventures. Whether you're here on business, or for sightseeing, bird watching, or just exploring the local area, we have a vehicle and a room for you. The Aurora Inn in Gnome. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. Remember, our Christmas special is next weekend from 7 to 8.30. What a fabulous time it's going to be. God bless every one of you and please be safe during these holiday seasons for all of us here. We'll see you next week. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. 30 miles off the coast of Alaska in the Bering Sea lies Nunavak Island, home to the Chupik people of Macoryuk. We recently received a tip that one of Santa's reindeer, Rudolph, was vacationing on Nunavak Island, visiting relatives. 
With Christmas so close, we thought we'd better travel out to Nunavak Island to remind Rudolph that millions of children were depending on him to guide Santa's sleigh across the world. With nearly 4,000 reindeer roaming the island, this would be no easy task. Wait a minute. Did you see that? I'm not sure, but I think I just saw Rudolph. There's only one reindeer I know that has a bright red nose. That must be Rudolph. It looks like Rudolph got the message and is heading towards the North Pole with a new recruit. Don't worry, kids. It looks like all is well this Christmas season. After Santa fed his reindeer, we were off to Scammon Bay. Scammon Bay is located on the Kun River, just one mile from the Bering Sea. With a steady wind, we landed. And even though it was around 30 below, Old St. Nick said it was still warmer than the North Pole. now to Hooper Bay, Alaska, a Yupik village of over a thousand people. Where even though we gave our gift packs to over 400 children, Santa still found time for a dance. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the largest Christmas greeting ever on Heartbeat Alaska. 400 wishes for you all at once. <laughs> Finally, our last stop is Chivak, Alaska. Chivak, Alaska is a Chupik Eskimo village. It's been a long haul for the old guy, but he's still hard at it and the kids couldn't be happier. Yeah.